This is Colin Selig of Binghamton University. This video lecture is on power and efficiency from Chapter 14.4 of the book Dynamics by R.C. Hibbler. Today's objectives, you will be able to determine the power generated by a machine, engine, or motor and calculate the mechanical efficiency of a machine. Activities include some applications, will define and find power, define and find efficiency, and do some problem solving. First, some applications. Engines and motors are often rated in terms of their power output. The power output of this motor at lifting this elevator is related to the vertical force F acting on the elevator, causing it to move upwards. Given a desired lift velocity V with a known maximum load, how can we determine the power requirement of the motor? The speed at which a truck can climb a hill depends in part on the power output of the engine and the angle of inclination of the hill. For a given angle, how can we determine the speed of this truck, knowing the power transmitted by the engine to the wheels? Can we find the speed if we know the power? If we know the power, output, and speed of the truck, can we determine the maximum angle of climb for this truck? So first, some definitions. Power is defined as the amount of work performed per unit time. So we can write that like this, P is equal to amount of work per unit time. But as we found out in the last section, the work can be written as the force dotted with the displacement. So making this substitution, we can write P is equal to F dot dr over dt. Now, dr dt is nothing but the velocity, so this is f dot v. Thus, power is a scalar defined as the product of the force and velocity components acting in the same direction. Using scalar notation, the power can be written, power is the force times the velocity times the cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between the force and the velocity vectors. So if the velocity of a body acted on by a force F is known, the power can be determined by calculating the dot product or by multiplying force and velocity components. Now the unit of power in the SI system is the watt. So one watt is equal to one joule per second. Remember joule is the unit of energy. That's also one newton meter per second. In the FPS system, power is usually expressed in units of horsepower, that's HP. So one horsepower is equal to 550 foot-pounds per second. That's also equivalent to 746 watts. Now let's define efficiency. The mechanical efficiency of a machine is the ratio of the useful power produced, the output power, to the power supply, or the input power. Or we can also write it like this. Now epsilon is what we use to denote, to denote efficiency. Now machines will always have frictional forces. Since frictional forces dissipate energy, additional power will be required to overcome these forces. Consequently, the efficiency of a machine is always less than one. So let's define the procedure for analysis. First, find the resultant external forces acting on the body causing its motion. This most likely means a free body diagram. Next, determine the velocity of the point on the body at which the force is applied. Energy methods or the equation of motion and appropriate kinematic relationships may be used. Multiply the force magnitude by the component of the velocity acting in the direction of F. This will yield the power supplied to the body. And in scalar form, it looks like this. Power is force times velocity times the cosine of the angle between them. In some cases, power may be found by calculating the work done per unit of time using this equation here. If the mechanical efficiency of a machine is known, either the power input or output can be determined if one of these is known. So let's do an example. Here we have a 50 kilogram block. It's hoisted by this pulley system and this motor M. 
At this instant, P on the cable has a velocity of 12 meters per second, which is increasing at the rate of 6 meters per second squared. Neglect the mass of the pulleys on the cable. Find the power supply to the motor at this instant. So our plan is to, to relate the cable and block velocities by defining position coordinates, draw a free body diagram of the block, use the equation of motion to determine the tension in the cable, and calculate the power supplied by the motor and then to the motor. So first we'll define position coordinates to relate the velocities of this point P on the cable and the block A. So S sub P is defined to some point on the cable and S sub A is defined to the block since the block moves with the pulley. So the kinematics of the situation the distance SP plus 2 times the distance SA is equal to the length of the cord. So you can differentiate this equation twice to relate the accelerations. So the acceleration of P plus 2 times acceleration of A is equal to 0. So the acceleration of A is equal to minus the acceleration of P over 2. And that acceleration of P was given as 6 meters per second squared, so the acceleration of A is minus 3 meters per second squared. It's in the upward direction. Let's draw a free body diagram of the block A. We have the weight M times G, and we have two tensions. There's one tension here and one here, so two times the tension of the in the cable. So the tension in the cable can be obtained by applying the equation of motion to the block, that's Newton's law. So we will sum forces in the y direction, that's equal to the mass times acceleration. So here's the free body diagram. So the summation of the forces is 2t minus the weight of A, that's equal to the mass of A, which is 50 kilograms times its acceleration which we just determined was 3. Now the weight is 50 times 9.81. So we can solve this for T. Tension in the cable is 320.3 Newton. Now the power supplied by the motor is the product of the force applied to the cable and the velocity of the cable. That power is force times velocity. They're in the same direction. So it's 300, the tension 320.3 times the velocity, which is given as 12 meters per second. So this is 3844 watts. Now the power supplied to the motor is determined using the motor's efficiency. So power into the motor is equal to the power out divided by the efficiency. So the power in is 38, I'm sorry, the power out is 3844 divided by the efficiency which is given as 0 0.8. So the motor power required is 4.8 kilowatt. Here's another problem. You have a 200 kilogram sports car it's increasing its speed uniformly. That means constant acceleration. It starts at rest and it goes to 25 meters per second in 30 seconds. The, en the engine efficiency is 0 0.8. Find the maximum power and the average power supplied by the engine. So our plan is to draw the free body diagram, apply the equations of motion and the kinematic equations determine the output power required and using the engine's efficiency will determine the input power. So let's draw the free body diagram. I'm going to put my axis along the road. So free body diagram. There's the weight of the vehicle. There's the force due to the tires and there's the normal force. Now NC and FC 
represent the resultant force of all four wheels. The frictional force between the wheels and the road pushes the car forward. That's this force here. What are we neglecting with this approach? Well, we're neglecting air resistance. But that's a function of the velocity squared, so we will neglect that. So first, let's apply the equation of motion in the x direction. So we'll sum forces in the x. That's equal to mass times acceleration in the x. So the forces in the x direction are the component of the weight. So that is 2,000 times g times the sine of the angle, which is angle is 5.711, plus F sub C is equal to the mass, which is 2,000 2, kilograms, times acceleration in the x direction. Now we can determine the acceleration in the x direction by using the constant acceleration equation. Remember that is velocity is equal to initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. So we know the car sped up to 25 meters per second, started from rest, and it did that in 30 seconds. So we can solve for the acceleration in x, 8.33 meters per second squared. Now we can plug that in here and solve for f sub c, and you get 36.19 newtons. Now the maximum power output of the car is calculated by multiplying the driving or frictional forces and the car's final speed. So the power out is equal to the force that we just calculated times the maximum velocity. And that would be 3619 times 25 meters per second. So 90.47 kilowatts. Now the average power is the force times the car's average speed, so that would be 36, 19. The average speed would be 25 over 2. So 45.28 kilowatt. Not really a useful number that. This one's the most important one. Because now we know the efficiency of the engine is 0 0.8. So we can say that the input power required is 90.47 kilowatts divided by 0 0.8, or 113 kilowatts. This concludes section 14.4 on power and efficiency. Next up, 14.5 through 14.6, potential energy and conservation of energy.